Imagine the terror of your home turning against you, invisible forces wreaking havoc. Welcome to the reality of the Hodgson family in 1977. In the heart of North London, nestled within the quiet suburb of Enfield, stands a semi-detached council house at 284 Green Street, an unassuming residence, home to the Hodgson family, a single mother, Peggy, and her four children, Margaret, Janet, Johnny, and Billy. Their life, ordinary as it may seem, was about to be upended, thrusting them into a realm of the extraordinary and terrifying. The summer of 1977 marked the beginning of what would become an 18-month long ordeal. A chilling August night, the calm shattered by the frightened voices of Peggy's daughters. They claimed their beds were shaking, moving on their own. Peggy, a skeptic, was left astounded when she witnessed a chest of drawers moving across the room, unaided. The ordinary had turned extraordinary the natural supernatural. This event unleashed a storm of poltergeist activity. Household objects took flight, heavy furniture moved without human touch, and unexplainable knockings echoed through the walls. The epicenter of these chilling events seemed to be the Hodgson girls, Margaret and Janet, with Janet showing alarming signs of possession. She began speaking in a deep, gravelly voice, claiming to be Bill Wilkins, a man who had passed away in the house years prior. The Hodgson's home, once a sanctuary, had become a stage for the unexplainable. Their lives, once ordinary, had become a living nightmare. The inexplicable occurrences that plagued their lives attracted the attention of the media and paranormal investigators. The Hodgson family found themselves at the center of a media frenzy, their plight captivating the nation. Yet, despite the fear and uncertainty, the Hodgsons stood firm, their courage unwavering. They faced the unknown, the invisible forces that had turned their world upside down, head on. They had no choice but to endure to brave the storm that had descended upon their lives. Little did they know, this was just the beginning of their ordeal. As days turned into weeks, the Hodgsons found themselves at the mercy of an unseen terror. The ordinary council house at 284 Green Street had become a stage for the extraordinary. Objects would inexplicably launch themselves through the air. Heavy furniture would shift and slide seemingly of its own accord. More than once, the family was awakened by an eerie knocking that echoed through the walls, a phantom drummer with no discernible source. But perhaps the most chilling aspect of this spectral siege was the focus on the two eldest Hodgson girls, Janet and Margaret. As if caught in an otherworldly spotlight, the sisters were frequently at the epicenter of the strange events. This unseen force seemed to have a particular interest in young Janet, who started showing signs of possession. On numerous occasions, her voice would transform into a deep, gravelly tone, a stark contrast to her normal, childlike pitch. The voice introduced itself as Bill Wilkins, a man who had passed away in the house years before the Hodgsons moved in. The voice of Bill Wilkins was not a benevolent one. It spoke of his life, his death, and his lingering presence in the house. Bill's voice, coming through Janet, would often taunt and threaten the family, adding another layer to their ongoing nightmare. The terror was not only physical, but psychological, an intrusion into their lives that left them feeling exposed and vulnerable. As the phenomena escalated, it became evident to the Hodgsons that this was not something they could handle alone. The invisible tormentor was growing bolder, its actions more brazen. The family was living in a state of constant fear and anxiety. Their home, which should have been their sanctuary, 
had been transformed into a haunted playground for an unseen tormentor. The events happening in their home were beyond the realm of the ordinary, and help was needed. Unbeknownst to them, their call for aid would attract attention far beyond the borders of Enfield, catapulting their story into a media frenzy and the annals of supernatural history. Enter Maurice Gross and Guy Lyon Playfair, paranormal investigators ready to delve into the unknown. The year was 1977, and the Hodgson household was under siege by unseen forces. Enter stage right, the unlikely duo of Gross and Playfair, two men with a shared interest in the paranormal and a determination to uncover the truth. Members of the esteemed Society for Psychical Research, Grosse and Playfair, brought a sense of order to the chaos, methodically documenting the events that transpired within the walls of the Green Street residence. They spent countless hours with the Hodgson family, capturing on film and audio the strange occurrences that seemed to defy explanation. One of the most evocative pieces of evidence they collected was a photograph of Janet Hodgson suspended in midair. The image, which has since become synonymous with the Enfield poltergeist case, shows the 11-year-old girl seemingly levitating above her bed. A chilling sight indeed that sent shivers down the spine of a nation already captivated by the tale. Skeptics, however, were quick to dismiss the photograph as nothing more than a clever trick, insisting it merely showed Janet jumping off her bed. But those who were present, who bore witness to the inexplicable event, held steadfast in their belief that there was something more at play. The look of sheer terror etched onto Janet's face, they argued, was not something that could be easily faked. Yet, despite the tireless efforts of Grosse and Playfair, the poltergeist activity showed no signs of abating. Objects continued to fly, furniture moved of its own accord, and the knockings, those eerie knockings, persisted. It seemed as though the entity, if indeed there was one, was unperturbed by the investigators' attempts to document its actions. And so the debate over the authenticity of the Enfield poltergeist raged on. Was it all an elaborate hoax, a series of tricks played by attention-seeking children? Or was there something genuinely supernatural at work, a force beyond our understanding? Despite the efforts of the investigators, the activity persisted, and the debate over its authenticity raged on. In the face of fear and uncertainty, the Hodgson family found themselves under scrutiny. As word of the inexplicable events spread, skepticism began to rear its head. Accusations of fraud were hurled towards the Hodgson family, with cynics suggesting that the children, particularly Janet and Margaret, were merely playing tricks for attention. But could two young girls orchestrate such elaborate pranks, convincing not just their family, but neighbors, police officers, and journalists? The controversy was further fueled by one of the most contentious pieces of evidence, a photograph of Janet seemingly levitating above her bed. Detractors argued that it was nothing more than a well-timed shot of Janet jumping off the bed. Yet, those present when the picture was captured insisted that there was no rational explanation for Janet's position in midair nor for the sheer terror etched on her face. The debate raged on, with the authenticity of the Enfield poltergeist being fiercely contested. Yet, the sheer volume and variety of the phenomena, witnessed by a multitude of credible individuals, lent a degree of credibility to the claims of paranormal activity. The chilling audio recordings the inexplicable movement of heavy furniture, the unnerving voice that seemed to emanate from Janet, 
all these elements painted a picture that was hard to dismiss as mere fabrication. Throughout this ordeal, paranormal investigators Maurice Gruss and Guy Lyon Playfair remained steadfast in their quest to understand the phenomena. Despite the controversy and skepticism, they continued their work, documenting the strange happenings and providing support to the beleaguered family. And then, as mysteriously as it began, the intense activity came to an end around September 1978. Lesser incidents reportedly continued for a while, but the reign of terror that had gripped the Hodgson household was over. The family, especially Janet, bore the scars of the experience, their lives forever marked by their encounter with the inexplicable. As mysteriously as it began, the intense activity came to an end, leaving the Hodgsons forever changed. The Enfield Poltergeist case remains one of the most debated in paranormal history. This haunting saga, unfolding in the ordinary suburb of Enfield, North London, in the late summer of 1977, has left a profound and enduring mark, not just on the Hodgson family, but on the collective consciousness of paranormal enthusiasts and skeptics alike. The events that transpired in the semi-detached council house at 284 Green Street have been the subject of countless investigations, debates, and media coverage, catapulting the Enfield poltergeist into a realm of infamy. The family at the heart of this tale, Peggy Hodgson and her four children, found their lives irrevocably altered their everyday existence becoming a chilling narrative of the supernatural. Janet, the second eldest and seemingly the primary target of the poltergeist, bore the brunt of this ordeal. Her purported possession and the gravelly voice that claimed to be the ghost of Bill Wilkins, a former resident of the house, became some of the most chilling aspects of the case. Even after the intense period of activity subsided, Janet and her family were left with the indelible scars of their terrifying experience. The Enfield poltergeist also sparked a fierce debate between believers and skeptics. The authenticity of the events was questioned, with some accusing the children of fraud and attention-seeking. Despite these accusations and the polarizing nature of the case, the sheer volume and variety of phenomena witnessed by a host of credible individuals lent a certain degree of credibility to the claims of paranormal activity. In the public imagination, the Enfield poltergeist remains a captivating tale of the supernatural. It continues to be a source of fascination subject to numerous studies, adaptations, and retellings each attempting to unravel the mystery that shrouds the case. Yet, the Enfield poltergeist at its core transcends the realm of the paranormal. It is a story of a family's harrowing ordeal, of their resilience in the face of the inexplicable, and of the enduring human curiosity to explore the unknown. A tale of terror, mystery, and the unexplained the Enfield poltergeist continues to haunt the annals of paranormal history.